everybody. Guess what? I'm not in my kitchen. I'm in my backyard and there's a tomato plant behind me. <laughs> it was just too pretty a day. Now I know I'm darker, like not as lit. And that's because I've got a big umbrella above me because it's kind of hot, but it's like 83 degrees today. And there's no way I can be inside all day. So the weather here in Durham, North Carolina is gorgeous. And I want to know how it is wherever you guys are. And we have a super special guest, Dora Stone, today. And I just adore Dora. Um, she's so sweet. She writes really great recipes. And she makes a lot of cool things really easily accessible. So, like, she takes maybe new to you ingredients and makes them really easy to use. And I know every time I use one of her recipes, I'm going to come out with like some amazing, amazing, <laughs> delicious dish. And I love that. So, um, I met Dora when you were doing the tamale book. I think we done something. I don't know how we met before, if we were just in the blogosphere together, but when you were working on your tamale book, which you guys totally need to check out, it's so good. Um, that's when we kind of became more friendly and we got to know each other a little bit. And we talked on clubhouse a lot last year, we did rooms together and I just, I just love Dora. So Dora, would you like to introduce yourself and kind of talk about you a little bit? Yes, hello everybody and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Dora Stone and I have a vegan Mexican recipe blog. It's called dorastable.com. And I've been vegan for about seven years now. I can't believe it, seven years. And I dedicate my time to sharing my family recipes in a vegan way, you know, that's better for the animals, for the environment, for health. So I'm super, super excited to be here. I also love Kathy and I'm super excited to be on here today. Well, I have lots of nice people that'll be watching and Apple already said hello to all of us. And I guess, um, oh, and Lydia says it's um, 76 and sunny in Montreal. Oh no, but you're inside because oh, no. you caught COVID. I'm so sad. I hope you're feeling better and let, I hope this will make your time pass a little bit at least. So Dora, tell us a little bit about how you veganize a lot of the foods you grew up with. So I think the biggest challenge with Mexican food, ironically, is not substituting the meat or, you know, any animal product, but it, it's difficult when you try to substitute the dairy. Um, like the vegan crema, which is used in a lot, uh, the crema, which is used in a lot of dishes, and like the queso fresco, or like the different types of cheeses. But what I usually do is I kind of focus on the basis of the cuisine itself, and the basis of the cuisine itself is mostly plant-based. So even indigenous communities today in Mexico eat mostly plant-based. You know, their main source of energy is corn, which is the base of the cuisine corn, beans, tomatoes, chiles. So I really kind of try to stick to that. I also do have some recipes, you know, that are kind of um, more popular, more in like in with the vegan crowd, you would say like substitute jackfruit and stuff like that. Like I also do a lot of those, but I do try to stay, stick more to like the original focus that really highlights and focuses on vegetables and not just substituting, you know, a meat substitute. And then, you know, that's it. Okay. Yeah. And I, I love chilies and I know that my accent is so poor, so I'm so sorry. I can't, I wish I could all like, maybe what I need to do at some point is get you to say all the different names so I can just press a button and have you say them properly. <laughs> but, but I butcher English words too. It is not only Spanish that I butcher. <laughs> Um, but I, I just love them. I know that we've talked about chilies before in a clubhouse room too, because yeah. they're, they're really magical because they're such a complex flavor. And most people think when you say chilies, you mean that's something that's really spicy. Do you want to talk about kind of how you use chilies a little bit and maybe some good chilies for people to start to look towards? 
you know, there's so many different chiles. It is, you know, there's fresh chiles and then there's dry chiles and they all have their specific uses. But if you're a newbie and you don't, you don't eat a ton of spicy food and you just want to start with fresh chiles, poblanos would be, poblano chiles would be a good option. Most of them are mild. It's, it's rare for you to get like a super spicy one. Um, you could also try, there's some mild hatch chiles. There's a um, mild like yellow, um, but in Mexico we call them banana peppers. They're like We call them banana peppers, yellow. yeah. Um, so there's a lot of good places to start with. And like I feed my kids chile, you know, though I try to put just a little bit of, you know, in all the dishes that I make to kind of get them started on building up their tolerance because chiles are not just about adding spiciness to the food, but they add so many different flavor profiles to it. Like each chile, you know, poblanos have like this very light smokiness to them, especially if you're going to roast them like we are today. And then dried chiles, I mean, they are my favorite because mm -hmm. the combinations you can make, like there's just so much complexity that can come from drying a chile. Some of them are dried and smoked. So it's amazing. I really encourage you, if you haven't cooked with chiles before, to try it because it can really, really um, change the way that you cook. I totally agree. And I know that I kind of go my own way. Like I make sauces sometimes in a maybe inspired by a traditional way. I wouldn't want to even come close to saying, you know, traditional, but um, I take a lot of chilies like ancho especially and I dehydrate, I take the seeds and the stems out, dehydrate them, and then that way I can use them as powders. And sometimes I even use it when I want a beefy flavor to add a little bit of extra umami the same way you might use tomato paste or tomato powder. And I can't even, maybe if I had it in my mouth right now, I could describe it, but it's like, it's such a complex layered flavor. So mm -hmm. kind of, it's like tomatoes times a hundred. Like I feel like tomato, dried tomatoes have this layered flavor, but nothing like chilies. Yeah, I completely agree. It, I would even say it has like that umami, you know, that like uh, flavor sensation that is so, hard to replicate, I think. Um, you know, mushrooms have umami, soy sauce has umami, and the peppers have this type of umami. But like you said, it's so complex. It's not just one flavor, it's like so many flavors. Yeah, and it's, it's just so beautiful. So I made a dried, um, like a dry mix beef bouillon. And when I was doing it, I have mushroom powder. I have all the things you expect, a little tomato powder, but it was the ancho chili powder that like, took it over the edge. It wasn't even that much, but that was just that one piece that was missing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think another misconception sometimes about chilies is that they're really expensive and they're hard to get. And I will tell you from some of my people, you, you can't get them all at Walmart, but you can get what you really need. And it's, yes. and even where there's not grocery stores sometimes, like regular grocery stores along with it, you can get it at Walmart. A lot of times if you're ordering things on Amazon, especially like Mexican ingredients, Indian ingredients sometimes too. Sometimes if you don't know exactly what brand and things to look for, you can get gouged, I think. How do you feel mm -hmm. about that? Yeah, I agree. You know, most of most chiles, unless you're trying to make like a mole that uses like a very specific type of chile, you can find most of them at Walmart. Or if you look, um, usually everywhere that I've lived, there's usually a Mexican market and a Mexican market will have them. Like even if you have to go a little bit out of the way to go to the Mexican market, and usually people are very helpful. Like if you have questions and you're like, hey, can I use this for that? You know, they're happy to help. I've had wonderful experiences. So like I go into and like um, we have compare or compare, depending on who you're talking to market. Mm -hmm. And it's a regular supermarket, but it's it's got all the Hispanic stuff too. But like it's got lots of fresh vegetables. I can get all the fresh chilies. I can get all the dried chilies. I usually go in like and I – I'm like this. I'm like this in the Indian market too. I want to go in and see, is there something I haven't seen before that someone can teach me about? 
and there was some chili I hadn't seen. It wasn't labeled. And I was like the crazy lady going, spicy like this, mild <laughs> like this. <laughs> you know? And they were like, what are you doing? But they were so <laughs> sweet. In the Indian market, I found a lot. If I just stand and stare at stuff, some little old lady will come over and give me a recipe. Oh, that's great. So, and, and I think it's really important for us because especially even on top of normally us isolating ourselves and working from home, there's been the pandemic and it's such a good way to get out and see all the different kinds of people in your neighborhood and find out about things that are happening, festivals and stuff like that, that you don't know about. Like I didn't know until I went to the Indian market, there was like a movie theater near me that just shows Indian movies. Oh, wow. Right? It, and so it's just so cool. And I think it's just a really good way of seeing for us all to be a good, strong community and also to support small businesses. So I yeah, agree with so you. Important. Yeah. And I think it's just you get to know more of your neighbors. You know, like I know the pandemic had me walking more. So I learned more about my neighbors and neighborhood. And I was super glad about that. Um, but anyhow, and, and so like, even whenever I'm doing anything, I'm always trying to get people out to the different markets. Cause to me, like I went to Texas to visit a friend and we went to all the grocery stores, all of them, like we probably had <laughs> seven grocery stores. So I could see the specialty stuff. We went to where the tortillas were made. I have a, we have a, at least two local tortilla makers near me. Um, and I'm not in a giant city. I'm I'm just in a medium city. And I want to go back and say that Sheila, oh no, sorry, Sherry Jones said she loves both of your pozole recipes. And every time, and they hit the mark in every way and transported me to Mexico. Oh, is, thank you. I know. And so most people are just saying hi. Um, Kathy said, I got inspired and bought a bunch of dried chilies on Amazon, then forgot what recipes were they were for, <laughs> sitting in the bag of my cabinet. Kathy, we will we will hook you up. Don't worry. And you can always ask me and go look on Dora's site, too. And you can see below, down over there, dorastable.com is up there. Dora, you don't see that. So you think I'm talking about an imaginary thing that's not there. <laughs> <laughs> And um, CJ from Scotland says, we have unspecified red chilies and green chilies, bird's eye chilies, scotch bonnet, and fingered chilies. And it's very possible because the UK has um, a culinary tie with India that those red chilies could be Indian red chilies is what I'm thinking. But uh, um, we can talk about this more too because... Um, and we can look, because I'm getting more viewers in the UK. Do you know any specific spots in the UK to order from, Dora? Um, I think I have, I don't have a one on the top of my head right now, but I do, I do have a, a source of a purveyor in the UK, but I would need to look it up and I can send it to you. That'd be great. And I'll put it on the YouTube so that everybody can get to that. Um, cause Unfortunately, I would love to be wandering around there finding all the markets, hopefully one day soon. And Kathy said she was in Texas earlier this year, bought ancho and another powder spice. Don't see them in, in Ohio. Some of these powdered that are already powdered, you can get at Penzi's. They are more expensive. Like sometimes I can get a bag of like um, ancho chilies for like under $3. And it makes a big jar of dried chili powder. Um, but I'm, oh, Megan says, Dora, one of my heroes. <laughs> Yay. Hey, okay. hey. <laughs> I know. It is both good and weird when people say things like that, right? I'm gonna, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put you full screen so you can start talking about the recipe. I will just interject if I have a question or I think they have a question and you can get cooking and not have to listen to me anymore. Well, hello everybody. I'm so happy you're here. Today we're going to make vegan rajas con crema. Now vegan rajas con crema uh, really translates into strips of poblano pepper, corn, 
um, onion and garlic in a very creamy, well, well, what I call vegan or almond crema that is kind of brings it all together. You serve it in tacos. It's delicious. But I am going to show you a special version today, which is no oil. So we're not going to use any oil today and it'll still be super creamy and you're not going to believe that this doesn't have dairy in it. And you know what? It is so much lighter. It is so much more refreshing and good for your stomach than if you had made this with dairy. So that gets me super excited. So we're going to start right away. And I'm going to show you really quick how we're going to process these peppers. This is a poblano pepper. And I just get this at my regular supermarket where all the jalapenos and the serranos are. And there's two ways that you can roast these. Um, traditionally, they're done on a gas stove like this one. This is what I'm going to do today. But I don't actually have a gas stove in my home. I have an electric stove. So Me too. When you have, so I'm glad yeah. you're showing this. <laughs> yeah. So when you have an electric stove, what you want to do is turn on your oven broiler to high. And then you want to take a sheet tray with foil and put your peppers on top. And then you're going to put them under the oven broiler for maybe one, one and a half minutes. And it's going to have the same effect of what we're going to do today. It's going to brown the outside of the peppers and char. So you, and then you want to flip them and try it on the other side. So it's really mimicking what we're going to do today with an actual gas stove. But you can do it in your oven using the oven broiler. So let's do that. And I'll talk to you, you know, how to do it both ways. So let's, let's turn this on. Always gets me nervous. Okay, so <laughs> this I, is I how we're going with my induction burner sometimes because it cooks so different than my regular stove. I know. So you want to put it right directly right on the flame. Sometimes if you have a gas stove at home, the like the I don't know what they're called. Like the I would say racks. the things that stick up. Because I don't know yeah, what it's little, called either. <laughs> <laughs> the little things that stick up will sometimes hold the pepper a little bit above the flame, but right now it's like directly on it, and that's okay. So what we want to do is get it charred on all sides. In the oven, you want to do the same thing. And now once it's charred completely on all sides, you want to put it in a container, in an airtight container. And I'm just going to use like a little Tupperware with a lid or you can use any container, a glass container with a lid, or even in Mexico, sometimes they just put them in like a plastic grocery bag. I think the I've done it before in a, a paper bag, like a paper grocery bag. Have you heard of that too? Yes, you know, any, any container that'll hold them, and the whole point of doing that is that you wanna trap the steam. So the steam that the peppers release once they're all together and trapped in your container is going to release the skin, the charred skin, and make it easier to peel. There is, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the pepper right now. I don't know if you could see, but it's charred. Yeah. So now I'm gonna flip it. And there's also a little trick I learned at my parents' restaurant. Instead, and I thought this was super cool, instead of putting them in an airtight container, they put salt on it. Like after the pepper is roasted, they put it in like a hotel pan, and then they put a bunch of salt on it, and that really makes the, the charred skin just like whoop, fall off. Of course, you also have to rinse it, you know, because you have all that salt on there afterwards. But it's another little trick I've learned recently. That's super cool. I've never heard of that at all. All right, so we want to get it as charred as you can. Now, if you're going to make chiles rellenos, this is the pepper that you would use. But I recommend, especially if you do it in, if you're doing this in the oven, that you keep an eye on it. Because right today we're going to chop them up, so we don't really need the pepper to hold its shape. But if you're making chiles rellenos, you want the pepper to hold its shape. So you really only want to char the outside of it. If you overcook it, if you char it more than it's supposed to, it's going to be very hard to make chiles rellenos. The pepper is just going to kind of flop around and not really hold anything. That's a really good point. 
too to think about. And I kind of like this, and that makes this a really great recipe if you've never done this before because it's super forgiving. Yes, and it's a good practice, I would say. If you've never worked with peppers before, it's a very good practice. Okay, so my pepper is looking very good. It's charred on all sides. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off this thing. And what I'm going to do is just put it in my container. Okay, we have a question from Fern. Will charring release spicy fumes in the air? Um, I don't know, really. Unless your corona pepper is like really spicy, which is rare, but not, um, if you were charring jalapenos or serranos, I would say it would, but not, not with poblanos. Okay, that's a good point. And now with my question to you, because I, I was, as soon as you said charred jalapenos, I was thinking, ooh, that'd be good in the salsa. I could probably do something like that in my air fryer. Right. You oh, can the make air fryer. I haven't done it myself personally, but people have told me that you can do this in the air fryer. Okay, because that way, at least it would be closed off, and you could even maybe do it outside if you have a super reaction to spicy. Um, I've been dehydrating my onions and peppers outside. Cheryl hates it when I dehydrate the anchos or you know put them in the dehydrator. I love the way the house smells. <laughs> Okay, so we have, I put the lid on it, and I'm going to let it sit for five minutes. But the magic of television, I have Woo! peppers right here that have been sitting in here more than five minutes to show you. So usually what happens is the pepper becomes kind of soft, and you can easily see, you just take off the skin. And there's no, you don't even have to use a knife or anything. You could just use your hands. Well, I use my hands, but if you're sensitive to spicy, I would use gloves to do this. Um, mm -mm -mm. I usually with, with porano peppers, I don't use gloves. I do use gloves with, with serranos and jalapenos because you know it is going to happen. You're going to rub your eye and your fingers are going to be spicy and then you're going to be crying. I love that was a, that was a great mom line and that's exactly how I would say it too so you can't see me but I am just smiling so big because that it's true whenever you're like oh I'm just gonna cut this up really quick and I'll be okay it is the day that you're gonna shove your whole finger in your eye yeah okay so what we're gonna do is take off all the skin and then once the skin is off I'm gonna take off now if you're you look like mild chiles and you find that these peppers, like you're roasting them and you're like, they smell spicy. You can tell right away if they're spicy or not because they'll smell, like you'll smell the spiciness. Um, you can rinse these or let them sit in water to take away some of the spiciness if you want it to be super mild. And that would be after you roast it so and take the yes, skin after. off, you would soak it maybe like an hour or two or would you soak it overnight? No, I only soak it for like 30 minutes and find that that's enough. But if you really, really want it to be mild, I would say an hour tops. Okay. Okay, so now I have all my chiles already peeled. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open it. And I'm going to take off this part right here, which is where most of the seeds are. And the stem, because we don't need it. If you were making chiles rellenos, I would recommend that you keep the stem. Now my chile over here, it's got seeds that are all stuck in there. So the easiest way to take them off is to just give it a quick rinse. But if you like spicy, the other way around, if you really like spicy, I wouldn't rinse them at all. I would just try to take away the seeds with your hands or with your knife so that you don't dilute any of the spice. That's a great tip too. Like I. I like medium spicy things and Cheryl, like literally when we go for Indian, she orders baby mild, which means <laughs> it's for the kids. Like sometimes she thinks black pepper can be spicy in a mood. It's oh, hard. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm going to grab my knife and show you how you can take them off with a knife. You just kind of slide your knife. And oh, they're gonna come that right is off. so good. 
And that's this way I don't have to rinse them. I love spicy. And the kids are gonna eat this, so I need to try and make it mild. And here's a an off the wall question a little bit. So usually if somebody eats something that's too spicy for them who are not vegan, they would drink milk to help. Mm -hmm. Is there a good vegan version or remedy? Uh I don't know about a drink, but if I find something is too spicy, I think a little bit of fat helps. And by fat, I mean like avocado. Like if you're making enchiladas, if you try one of the enchiladas on my site and you find that they're too spicy, then I would add the vegan crema to them and maybe a little bit of avocado and that would kind of help a little bit with the spiciness. I don't know about something that you could drink though. But I think that's a great idea, though, because I'm just thinking most of the time when I have poblanos, they're perfect. Every once in a while, even if I get one out, it will it might be a spicy one. It's very rare. But so, like, if you've, mm -hmm. made, if you've got a bunch and maybe one person didn't like spicy, I think it's a good idea to then maybe have some of your crema or um, maybe some avocado or guacamole or something that people could put on to kind of temper it a little bit. Cause I do know you're not supposed to drink water cause that just spreads the oil. Mm -hmm. um, and it's similar though, not similar in taste to my dog for a while was putting a frog or a toad in his mouth. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't, there's actually an oil on them. And so it makes their mouths froth. Like he went out to go night, night bathroom and came back like frothing at the mouth. We were no. <laughs> And um, and the vet actually said it's kind of like eating spicy food. You could just give him some milk or something. And so that also leads me to think, oh, that's true. I probably could give him some vegan yogurt or some cashew cream or something like that to help help do that. Mm -hmm. That's so funny, Kathy. <laughs> I, well, we were terrified. We're like, did you get bit by a snake? Did <laughs> it was it was five minutes of like. Oh, we're going to bed. We're all sleepy to like, okay, emergency vet. <laughs> but I thought I was able to follow the trail in the yard of his like spittle that he was frothing. <laughs> and literally there was a frog with spittle on it. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. All right. He's so I'm done with this. this. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was going to say he's older and more manageable, but that looks good. And you know what? You did a lot of chilies really fast. And I love the knife suggestion because that worked so much quicker than rinsing all of those off. Yeah. yeah. So now what I'm going to do is just cut them into strips. Now you can, I like them long like this, but it, you could also cut them in half. And then so that the, that they're, oops that they're like this big instead of being long. And it doesn't I have to be perfect. They just need to be strips. I love that. I just wish I was closer to you so I could taste this later too. <laughs> yeah. You're just gonna have to make it, Kathy. I, I am, cause you know, I've had something like this and I can't remember, it's been a long time and now I'm watching you make it, it makes me want it really badly. And my friends, um, Sherry was saying she's in Katy, Texas. And my, my best friend just moved from Katy, Texas, literally into her house. And so I was thinking I could invite her over to do this. And that's where I went to the Indian and Mexican grocery stores and stuff. Um, <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to put this in this container for now. And we are going to move on to make our almond crema before we start. Should we start sauteing? Actually, let's start. No, let's make the crema first. Let's make the crema first, and then we could just put it all together. Super easy. I want to move this out of the way. All right. So the almond crema, so usually people, when they try to make, I'm pretty sure you've heard of cashew cream. And yes. that's basically what I'm going to do today. But instead of using cashews, I'm using almonds. And there's a very specific reason for that. Cashews tend to be sweeter than almonds. 
They have like a little bit of a sweet taste. And for me, that doesn't work with Mexican food. It works with sweet stuff. Like if I was gonna make fresas con crema, I would use cashews. But when I make like enchiladas, when I make everything, it, I, I feel like it leaves the crema with a little bit of sweetness. And you know, I didn't grow up with that flavor profile. I know here in the United States, everything's sweet or to my, in my perception, everything is sweet. It is. Um, so that's why I'm using almonds today. And I encourage you to try it. I do have to mention today I'm using a high speed blender. So it's gonna be a little bit different if you don't have a high speed blender. So because I have a high speed blender, I'm gonna start with slivered almonds that haven't been soaked. If you don't have a high speed blender, then I recommend that you soak these overnight. I would start with the almonds. And then I have almond milk. This is unsweetened almond milk. I have lemon juice. I have water. Now you could use all almond milk, but I sometimes I find that almond milk, depending on the brand that you buy, even if it says it's unsweetened, it's a little bit sweet. That's why I only add a little bit of almond milk and the rest is water. And I just added garlic to it. Now you could add nutritional yeast to this to give it more of like a cheesy flavor. I prefer not to, so I'm not gonna add it today, but if you do add nutritional yeast, I would add one teaspoon. And then all we're gonna do is blend it together and it's going to make a crema. It's like magic. <laughs> I'm gonna pause right here just to add a little bit of salt and to let you know that you're gonna to need to blend this for a while. Well, a while compared to other stuff, maybe like three to four minutes if you want it to be really, really smooth. I do recommend that you check your consistency um, and see if it's too thick. You could add a little bit more water or almond milk. So I'm gonna keep on blending. They're delivery people all around. So the dog is like barking. He's got the neighbor dog barking, even though they're not in our driveway anymore. So, but if you, if you just wanted to make that go quicker, would you just soak the slivered almonds? Yes. So he does, I mean, it does make it smoother and it does help with the blending. I just always forget. <laughs> Me too. I always forget to soak them. I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. And get going. One thing I have heard of that I all I either forget to do or don't have the room to do. It's like some people soak their cashews or other nuts, drain them, and then put them in the freezer for last minute use. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, so let me show you how to do the consistency. Let's see if I can show you. So it coats the back of my spoon. And when I pour it, let me see. try it. It's very horrible. Oh, it that will great. thicken in the fridge. So if you think it's like, oh, it's too thin, 
I would just put it in the fridge and it's gonna thicken just a little bit. Now this recipe for crema, I use on my enchiladas, I use to make uh, chipotle pasta. I just add chipotle pasta and a roasted tomato to this and then put it on top of pasta. I use this in a sweet version instead of garlic. I'll add a little agave and make uh, like a sweet crema that, that I use for fresas con crema. So this sauce is super versatile. Versatile? Versatile? No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I think that's a little tomato, tomato. I think they're both. Yeah. Fun. And can you just recap exactly what you're making? Someone came in now and was kind of like, what are you cooking? So if you could just give a quick, right. What she's making right now is an almond crema, but it's for, uh, it's for a dish called rajas con crema. And rajas just means, uh, pepper strips. So it's, Roasted bologna pepper strips with corn, onion, garlic, and crema. All the delicious things. Okay, so we're gonna, just going to set that aside. And now we're going to put it all together. Let's see. Over here. Yeah, you're perfect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start putting a little bit of broth in the pan. And that's, I use instead of oil to cook the onions. Right. I'm going to wait for this to heat up. Once your pan is hot, you add your onions. Let's see if it's hot. A little bit longer. And now I'm using a white onion, but you can also use yellow onion. It's not traditional to use a red onion, but I don't see why. If you love red onions, I don't see why you couldn't use them. Because they're also delicious. Right now I'm going to add all my onions. And we're going to let these sweat down. We don't want them. I mean, it's okay if they get a little bit brown, but we don't want them to be brown or caramelized. You just want to kind of sweat them. And when I say sweat them, what I mean is once this gets hot enough, I'm going to turn down the heat and let the low heat cook down the onions until they're soft, until they're tender, and they're gonna be a little bit translucent. They're not gonna look as wet. It's a beautiful pan, too. You know what, this pan, I got it, it well, HEB is only in Texas, but I got it at HEB for like $35. It looks like a super fancy, expensive pan, I will tell you that. No, it's just $35. I do find, because I also have one, like a super expensive pan, but the only problem that I found with this pan is that sometimes the, this colored enamel, it'll chip off with time. Uh, but I mean, when it does, I just buy a new one because, you know, and it got the slot. I probably had it a whole year before it like starts chipping and starts looking kind of a little bit warm, but the actual, you know, like cast iron part is great. That's a great price for a, a big cast iron pan like that. Yeah, and I really do like that it's big because it is big. We eat a lot in this house, and we need to cook a lot. Of <laughs> you have a big family. Yes. Well, I have three kids and my husband, so there's five of us. But we eat so much and all the time. I always, my husband and I always say that our kids are so spoiled. They have no idea. They're food spoiled because we make all sorts of things. Both my husband and myself went to culinary school and we've worked in the restaurant industry for many years. So we make stuff at home, you know, that people only, can only eat at restaurants or they don't even know about or, you know, like in a, a really like silly example is sometimes I make veggie sushi and it'll just be like cucumber and like, like um, avocado, 
and my husband, um, his mother is Korean, so we've made Korean dumplings with a filling of like mushrooms, and glass noodles, you know, and like a full blown like we like hand put them together and like everything and the kids are just like oh la, la. we serve them their plate of dumplings and they're like this is great and we're like we've been doing this for like five hours now and you guys have no idea <laughs> that's awesome so i'm gonna ask you a totally weird question so if i'm looking at this and and for some reason i'm in a place that i can't find poblano peppers is there something you would substitute? I mean, obviously this dish is built on them, but would you? Yes. Um, I would say you could use, if you can have access to hatch peppers, that would be a very good option for this if you have mild hatch peppers. But if the only thing you can get is green bell peppers, you can use that. I would add, if you're using green bell peppers, I would add maybe a little bit of smoked paprika to get a little bit of that smokiness that the poblano pepper has. That sounds, that sounds good. And you would still go ahead and roast them though, correct? Or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I would. Take the skin off. Yeah. I added a little bit of broth to get this going, to cool down my pan if it's too hot and to get it going. Let me see if I can get you closer so you can see what it looks like. I have to move the computer. Right. Ooh. So they're a little bit brown, which are a little bit more brown than I, which way am I really? More brown than I like them, but it'll be okay. It'll be okay. They look pretty delicious. And Kathy said, What's in the pan instead of oil? She's using vegetable broth. Yes, I'm using vegetable broth. So now I'm going to add minced garlic. And we're also gonna let that cook slowly. The only thing about this portable burner is that I can never get the heat right. I turn it down and it's too low. I turn it up and it's too high. I'm like, ah! I feel the same way with my induction burner. But you have a you have an electric one, Kathy? Yeah, but it'll say something like five, seven. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm not used to those. I'm after I've been using it now, I guess for about four years on lives, I'm getting a little bit better. But at first I, everything was either too low or too high. Okay, so the garlic only has to cook maybe like one, one minute, two minutes. And we're gonna add our corn. Now I'm using what I call sweet American corn, which is just your the corn that you find in the grocery stores here in the United States. Um, I wanna mention that because in Mexico, corn is different. Corn is very starchy and it's not as sweet. So that if you are in Mexico or in another Latin American country, like Peru, um, Venezuela, then you would have to cook your corn for a little bit longer than I am today. But because this corn is very tender, it's very sweet, it really only has to cook for a couple minutes. And what I'm going to do now is help it along with more vegetable broth. And a little bit more. We don't want to drown it in vegetable broth, but we want to help it kind of get a little, cook a little bit faster and not brown. We do not want the corn brown. So that's what the, the vegetable stock is going to do. And we're going to let that cook just a couple minutes. And while that's going on, I'm going to heat up some tortillas. Mm. <laughs> Maybe it's too soon to heat them up. Let's let it cook. Another, let me think of another variation. This, well, this also um, reminds me of a dish that I love for the summer. It's called calabacitas. Actually, give me one second. I have to text my husband. Absolutely. He's like, are you done? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, that's the fun of being on live video. You get to know when the dogs bark, packages get delivered, husbands text. Um, and there, one thing that Sherry was saying, which is kind of off topic, but now's a good time. And I saw this yesterday is the three pack zip top silicone dishes are currently on sale at Target through July 7th for $38, which is about almost $10 off. And those are the really big ones that are good for putting, I'm actually have a vegetable drawer in my um, fridge. Like, you know, it's got the top part and then a drawer that goes through the whole thing. And I'm organizing some of that with the zip tops. Have you used them at all, Dora? I have not. You're going to have to send me a link. Okay. They're, they're quite expensive, but I did notice even Stasher, which is the first kind of silicone reusable bag that came up on my radar. I noticed at Target now they're doing this dish shape as well. So, um, and it's very thick. It's, I gotten some knockoffs from Amazon that were horrible, but the zip top ones really did well. All right, so our corn is done. And now all we're gonna do is add our poblano peppers. Now these are already cooked. So all you have to do is heat them up. You want to heat them up. That looks so good. And I now, know you're not you even done. I know. Once you heat them up, um, we're going to add the crema. I usually, look, in culinary school, they taught us that you have to add your salt as you go. That, that way you can taste and, you know, like, season as you go. But for me, personally, I like to season at the end. For some things, it's important that you do season as you go. Um, but especially if you're doing like a soup, you might over season it as you go. And then at the end, you find your soup is too salty because as it evaporates, as it cooks, it evaporates some of that liquid and kind of concentrates that flavor. So I usually wait, especially if I'm busy, you know, like if the kids are around, I don't really have time to like season and taste and season and taste. So I just kind of leave it all to the end. I like it at the end, or I do it a lot at the end of my recipes because some people don't eat salt or they do a salt substitute. And that way, mm -hmm. it's a really good way to kind of have a spot for that. And if anybody who's watching doesn't use salt, and it's fine if you do, because remember, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not here to tell you how to eat. I'm here to help you eat the way you, you need to eat. I do a salt substitute that I call plain salt substitute. One tablespoon garlic powder mixed with one tablespoon onion powder and one teaspoon ground celery seed mixed together because that'll impart kind of a salty flavor if you're not able to use it. And it won't change the flavors so much. Obviously, you don't want to use it on something sweet, but so it doesn't change the savory flavors that much. All right, Kathy, I'm going to move this out of the way. I've turned it off because this is done. And we can add the crema. I'm going to turn my computer down so you can see. We can add the crema off the heat. All right, there we are. You can add the crema off the heat because um, we don't really need it to be, this is hot enough to heat everything up. So what you want to do here, can you see Kathy? Is it, is yeah, it we see perfectly. Okay. What you want to do now is pour all of your almond crema on top. That looks now, so good. The um, moisture from the onion and the peppers are going to make it so creamy when you combine it with the almond crema. And Marilyn says that looks amazing too, and it does. And now this, you can store it, you know, up in the fridge in an airtight container for up to three days. I've never tried freezing it, um, but I don't see why you couldn't. It is, honestly, you're not even going to have leftovers. It's so good. <laughs> If it's hard for you to get poblano peppers, you could probably make a double or triple batch and freeze some of it before you added the crema. Yes, I would recommend that. That would be probably better. So 
but I agree. Wow. Like, if, I would not waste a bit of that. So if there was some that needed to go in the freezer like that, I would do it. Okay, so I am heating up tortillas off screen. And I just use my comal heats up. I'm just using these are tortillas that are done here in my town locally. And I would recommend that you look at the packaging. Um, the less preservatives, the less really the corn tortillas. I serve this with corn tortillas. Um, the really should be just corn lime, which is not lime like fruit lime, but a mineral lime, and water, which is all you need to make uh, mixed and realized corn. I never had this with flour tortillas, but I think it would still be good. I miss flour tortillas. I have to say. Because the last time I was in Texas, I can't, I can't have gluten anymore, um, which makes me very sad. Because, like, the flour tortillas in Texas are magic. Oh, they're so thick. They're like pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> but corn tortillas are amazing, too, especially when you get the nice, fresh ones that don't have all the ingredients. It seems like the ones that have all the ingredients are often found in our grocery stores because i'm not in texas in texas but we also have a few um local tortillas hello you have my kids tortilla. are back <laughs> this is my son dylan hello hey dylan he's gonna be our taste tester today oh that's a great job <gasps> hi this is my hi. daughter Karina. where'd she go there she is did you guys go do something fun? This yeah. is my son, Theo, and it's his birthday today. <gasps> Yay! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Now, this is Theo. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> He's, so He's just being generous in case it's somebody else's. Yeah, yeah, in case it's somebody else's birthday. Okay, let me go get our tortilla and we can taste this delicious. And food. Apple says happy birthday. Um, and then Kathy was asking about those um, zip top silicone bags. They're not called bags, they're called dishes. And this one, so they have some that are dishes that have a wide bottom, and then the other ones they call bags. And Gina says happy birthday to you. And Fern right. as well, happy birthday, beautiful family. <gasps> beautiful food too, oh my gosh. All right, so all we have to do now is add some of your rajas con crema onto your tortilla. And eat it. Now, if you find that your poblano peppers aren't as spicy as you thought you were going to be, you could add some salsa to this. But let's have our taste tester try it out. He's going to tell us if it's too spicy. Mm -hmm. Not too spicy. Awesome. <laughs> so, so, yeah. That looks so good. Um, and Lydia says they're so cute and happy birthday, meaning your kids. Mm -hmm. And Apple is asking, what's the best I way to store leftover it. fresh tortillas? Fridge or freezer, or does it matter? If you're not going to use them, like if you use them, you bought tortillas for a recipe, and then you're not going to use them again, I'll put them in the freezer. But if you're going to eat them every day, I would just put them in the fridge. That makes sense. And Marilyn has a recipe she's going to try for gluten-free flour tortillas made with cassava flour. I've heard that's a good substitute, cassava flour. They have some now at the stores, some different ones. I even saw some cactus ones in the freezer section of Sprouts last time. Mm -hmm. But they were like... Two dollars of tortilla, and right at that yeah, moment, I, was not, I wasn't willing to risk it. <laughs> so, if somebody knows if they're good and tells me, they were beautiful though. They they were really pretty colors. 
Well, that's it, Kathy. Rajas con crema. It's awesome. So is that what you guys are having for lunch? I'm switching us back to where it's both you and me. Yeah. Yes, this is going to be lunch. And if you could see, my husband is eating it right now over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And you guys, don't forget, go to DorisTable.com. She has a tamale book that you need. And tell, tell us a little bit about the other book you were telling me about when we started. I have another ebook, and it's this is a free ebook. And if you go to my site and it asks you to uh, subscribe, and it's it'll say it'll pop up and then say, "Do you want this ebook?" So it's free for my email subscribers, and it's an amazing book. It's called Our Vegan Mexico, and it was a collaboration with thirty-two cooks, Mexican cooks or Mexican American cooks. And what we did was do vegan Mexican recipes that represent each state in Mexico. So it's more regional Mexican cooking. It's, you know, it might be some very different from what you're familiar with. You know, I'm from Coahuila, which is right in the border with Texas. So we eat a lot of flour tortillas. There's a lot of meat. So there's a lot of meat, like vegan meat dishes. But down south, in like Veracruz, they eat more ceviche. They eat more plantains. They eat more. So it's very Mexican cuisine is very, very regional. So I love this ebook, especially because it was a collaboration with other cooks but also because it's so diverse. The recipes are so diverse. Like you can have, I, there's one is from the state of Hidalgo and it's an arroz con leche empanada. Yeah, it's delicious. And the empanada is made, it's almost like a Cornish pasty because the ink, they're in like, I don't remember the year, I'm so bad. Um, there was a time during like the mining era in Mexico that the English came to Mexico to mine silver. And they lived in this town of Hidalgo and they brought their Cornish pastry, pastries tradition. And then, you know, it has become a thing. So you can get all kinds of pastas are called. So that's just an example of the type of recipe that's in the ebook and it's completely free. All you have to do is subscribe to my email list. Then you have no excuse, people, and you need to go do that now. Because what's the worst thing that happens? You get some really great recipes in your email. I say do. Yeah. So <laughs> Dora's trying to be polite, but I'm not going to be polite for her. Sign up for her list right now, and then you'll have more <laughs> yummy things like this to, to try out. But thank you so much, and thanks for taking time out with your family to spend some time with us and show us this delicious dish. And hopefully you'll come back and show us some other delicious dish sometime soon. You're always welcome. Oh, I would love to, Kathy. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, bye, everybody, and have an amazing rest of your week. I'm not sure where my camera is.